Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome to the 38th Pi Games tutorial video. In this video, what we're going to be talking about is how to add a score to our Snake game. So, once we're, what we're going to need to do is we're going to come up to the top of our script here, and we're just going to define a new function, and this is going to be score. So, we're going to say define score, and then the score function is going to have one parameter that we pass through it, and if you couldn't guess now, it's score. So now, uh, within our score function, what do we want to do? Well, our score, we want it to be kind of like up and to the left. So the top left side of our screen will do. So that's what we know we want. So we're going to put that there. So we already know, basically, we have every tool that we need to put a score at the top left of our screen. So now we're just going to kind of put together some of the things that we've learned and recycle it to make a score. So first of all, to make a score, we need to use some sort of text. So we're going to say text equals, uh, and we're going to use small font dot render, and then we're going to render using that font the following. We're first going to say score colon, and then, um, and actually co score colon p uh, space uh, plus, because if we use the comma, it's going to treat like a new uh, parameter, um, score plus string version of the score. Um, and then true, and then we will use the color of black, and true needs to have a capital T. And that's our score. Now, all we have to do is blit this to our screen. So we go game display dot blit. What do we want to blit? We want to blit text. Where do we want it now? Zero, zero. We just want it right at the top left. So easy enough to uh, put that up. And that is it. Obviously, we need a game dot display dot up or game display dot update uh, to show this, but that's okay. So now what we want to do is we're going to come down to our game loop, way down here, and basically right before this pi game dot display dot update, we're going to call score. So that's easy enough. Score, and then we have to fill in the score blank. Well, shoot, how are we going to uh, calculate the score? Well, we could, you know, every time we eat an apple, we could say score plus equals one or something. But that sounds like something we're already doing, right? So snake length, we're already adding plus equals one every time we eat an apple, the snake length. So why don't we use snake length? So for our score, we could just throw in snake length. But snake length starts at one. So... We don't really want to start at 1, we start at 0, so it's easy enough. We would say snake length minus 1, and now we have a score. And that's passed through. This is actually a number, right? That's going to be an integer, but we convert it to string up here, if you recall. So that should be all we have to do. So let's go ahead and save and run that bad boy, see what we get. Uh-oh, invalid syntax, amateur string score. Oh, we forgot a comma. Let's try that again. Welcome to Slither. See the play. So we see we got a score. We need an apple. And the score ticks up by one every time. So that's easy enough. Um, just as a, a another aside. Oops, I tried to get my snake to go over to score so I could show you. But you can see how our snake is under the score. Depending on what you put up there, um, you might want to keep that in mind. Um, same thing with the apple. The apple is going to generate... Um, or it should generate, I think, under the score. Let's go back and look at the code. But just remember that everything is up at, in the order that it's blit. So first we hit, are blitting our snake, right? We're drawing our snake to the screen. Then the score. So actually... Mm, where, are, where the heck are we drawing the apple? Like, where is the... Call? Okay, right. So we're blitting the apple very first, then the snake, so the snake in theory goes above the apple, then the score, which goes above all of that. Depending on what you're making, sometimes the wording that you want, you may want that to be on top of everything, or you may want that to be behind everything so it doesn't become obstructive to the game. You just kind of have to keep that in mind. For snake, it's really not a problem. If there's an apple there and the text is covering it, we can still see it really easily. If our snake is there, we can still see our snake really easily. So it's not a big deal, but it is something that you want to keep in mind that you need to think about that when you create uh, things like scores and, 
and other images like and putting on sprites to the screen and stuff you just have to keep in mind that it goes in the order that you call them so anyways that was easy enough so that's it uh, with with our game here I'm pretty content with the game there might be like some little subtle things that we want to change about snake but for the most part I'd say we have a pretty darn good snake game here so what's next well Chances are, if you've just made your first game ever, um, you're kind of excited about it. You might want to show it to your friends or whatever, but your friends might not have Python, and even if they don't have Python, they don't have Pygame installed, and all this stuff, it's a huge mess, and you're not really able to show off your epic coding skills. But uh, in Python, there's a couple of things uh, that we can do. First of all, we can use something like... Um, in Python 2.7, there's a, a module called Py2exe, and that allows people to share their Python scripts um, that way by converting it to an executable. But in Python 3, um, py 2 exe is not really the best solution, if at all. So what I use it for Python 3 is a module called CXFreeze. So what we're going to be doing in the next uh, video 2 or even 3 is covering CXFreeze. So um, that's going to allow you to convert your Py, your Py game to an executable so somebody can run it on Windows. I'll also show you guys how you can build a distribution with it so you can actually even build like an installer for your game. And then after that, um, and then if you're on Mac, I'll show you a little bit of what you need to do. But then also there's a lot of little things when it comes to converting your scripts to executables uh, that we're going to have to cover, especially with Pygame because there's a lot of stuff going in. Um, like some stuff you just wouldn't even consider like fonts. Since we're using system fonts, you have to think about well, are, are those system fonts even available on other machines and all of this kind of stuff. So definitely a lot of stuff you got to think about when you're doing it, but luckily I'll be able to help you guys out. So we'll talk about uh, distributing your game and all of that in the next video. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching.